In this lecture, we're going to discuss the next assumption of the linear model, uh, that which um, the assumption that the error in the uh, regression model is normally distributed, and talk about ways that we can relax that assumption. Uh, in some ways, there's a very wide suite of ways we can relax that, essentially building a data model uh, around any other distribution other than the normal. Uh, but there's one particular important class of um, models called generalized linear models that uh, attempt to retain the linear model structure of linear models while um, relaxing that assumption of normality. So uh, this is a, a specific set of solutions, not a, a truly general set, but we've kind of conceptually covered the general set of solutions uh, in, in prior lectures. So the, the idea of the generalized linear model is to retain that linear function, uh, but allowing alternative probability distribution functions to be used in the likelihood. Uh, the, the real challenge here is that for many of those uh, PDFs, uh, the range that the model parameters are allowed to take on uh, is not uh, minus infinity to infinity, which is what it is for the linear model in the normal assumption. Uh, and so there's a need to uh, account for that. And so, for example, in the Poisson with lambda, that lambda can only be positive. Or in the binomial with theta, the probability term, uh, that can only be bound between 0 and 1. Um, and there's multiple ways that that could be addressed. But uh, the standard one in generalized linear models is what's called through what's called a link function. A link function is, is a function used to translate our linear model to the domain of the probability distribution. Um, worth noting, the link function actually technically should be thought of as part of your process model. It's not just the transformation. And it turns uh, your process model, in almost all cases, gets turned to a, a, what is actually a nonlinear model. Uh, there are uh, a wide variety of link functions available for use in many ways. Any function that meets the requirement of translating from that you know, plus or minus infinity range to the range of a particular parameter could be used uh, as a link function. Uh, this table indicates what are often called the canonical or standard or kind of default link functions used in a lot of, of um, distribution. So if we think about the normal distribution, you know, there, there essentially is no link. It's the identity or one. So we just have that our x beta is used to predict mean mu. Our mean is x beta. Um, and then if I jump down to, for example, the Poisson, um, you know, that we often use a, a log link because that log link translates uh, something that can be plus or minus infinity to that uh, domain of only being positive. Um, for the exponential and gamma models, where their rate parameters often are you know, kind of make sense in terms of a one over uh, the, the inverse function is often used by link. And an important case I want to dive into in more detail in this, rec this lecture in particular it are the link functions for the binomial and multinomial models, uh, which are based on what's called this the logit link. So this is an example of the logit link. It says that uh, our linear model is related to the log of uh, the mean over one minus the mean, and you know the mean because we're thinking about the mean in terms of a probability. Uh, this, you know, for example, in the binomial, that would be you know your theta one over theta. Um, this is expressed in, is essentially giving us the odds uh, in favor of one event versus the other, and so the logit is interpreted as the log of the odds. Um, some important reference points for the logit: uh, if your probability is is fifty percent, so you have a fifty fifty chance. Uh, so your log your odds are, are one to one. 
or an odds of one. Uh, that trends, the log of that is zero. So uh, we look here uh, on the x-axis in the, uh, the probability of 50% probability translates into uh, a logit of zero or if we look at it the, the other way in terms of the inverse, which is how we, the function actually gets used in practice, you know, a log, you know, if zero goes in on the x-axis, that predicts a 50% probability. Um, the logit, uh, this combination of a binomial or uh, binomial probability as our, our PDF combined with a logit transform, you know, gives us uh, one of the most common and important cases of generalized linear models, which is logistic regression. And logistic regression is used uh, in cases where the observed data can only take on two states, a zero or one, a true or a false, present versus absent, uh, numerically usually coded as a zero or one. Um, since the linear model that underlies this is making a prediction for each x separately, uh, predicting each y separately, uh, that binomial model is, uh, is a sample of one for each individual data point, giving us uh, a Bernoulli. And so we end up with a overall likelihood that involves a Bernoulli data model in terms of theta and a process model where the logit theta is related to our linear model x beta. Important to remember that that logit, that kind of sigma shaped, uh, sorry, sigmoidal shaped, S shaped curve of the logit uh, is part of our process model. It's not truly a linear model. Um, and then if we fit this in a Bayesian perspective, we would also need a prior on the betas. <clears throat> Graphically, we can look at this and see that we have a relation between the x's and y's, dependent on some, some beta, some prior and some betas. Uh, but because the binomial distribution uh, represents all of its uncertainty in terms of sample size and probability, there's not an additional sigma term. So we don't actually have an additional sigma like we do in the, the linear regression. We just have the, the slopes and intercepts. <clears throat> so this is an example of what typical uh, data would look like uh, if you were fitting a logistic regression. You know, it's just, just zeros and ones. Uh, one thing that often happens with uh, the sort of binomial data is it can often be hard to, to know, you know, what is a sensible model to fit. So one thing that I often do to help visualize uh, the underlying patterns in, in this data is I, I often bin uh, binomial data and then calculate the binned means. And so here's an example of calculating the binned means uh, over these ranges from zero to two, two to four, four to six. And the bin width can be whatever you want. You kind of want to kind of strike a balance where if you make the bin, bin width too wide, uh, you're averaging over a lot of potential pattern. If you make the bin width too narrow, uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, noise. Um, it's also worth noting that you can actually also calculate uh, the uncertainties within each bin as well. If you kind of wanted to get a, a estimate of the you know, the standard error uh, around that mean. So in terms of fitting logistic regressions. Let's start with the maximum likelihood. Uh, there's two options there. One is that there actually is a built-in function in R for fitting most basic GLMs uh, using the, the kind of the standard uh, uh, probability distributions and, and link functions. So for example, if I want to fit a binomial model with a logit link, I use the GLM function instead of the LM function. I write the equation for the model the same way as I would an LM, so I could easily add additional terms and interactions and whatnot, uh, same as I do an LM. But I have this additional argument, which tells me, family tells me what uh, probability distribution I want to use. And then within that probability distribution, I have to specify which link function I want to use. <clears throat> um, alternatively, it's not actually hard to uh, 
write down the likelihood function for uh, most GLMs directly. So if I wanted to write down the log likelihood function and just optimize it, I would have you know uh, the negative uh, log equals true, negative log likelihood, so binomial likelihood of my observed data, uh, sample size of one, and then I'm here taking the inverse logit of the linear model itself. Uh, either way, I will get the same answer. Uh, worth noting that you know, under the hood, GLM uh, for some length of binomial actually is performing a numerical optimization under the hood. Um, and so either way, you'll get the same result. And here's an example of fitting that logistic model uh, to this x, y, sorry, to this data set of this particular set of x and y's. And we can see that in this particular case, the logit uh, link was a regional, reasonable uh, choice of link function that actually does seem to describe uh, the patterns in the data fairly well. If you use the uh, default GLM functions in R, you will get uh, a number of things back that are analogous to things you get back from LM, but there are some important differences in what you get back that are worth noting. Um, so first of all, uh, if you remember in LM, it gave you uh, minimum, maximum quantiles and means in terms of the actual residuals of the data. Um, in um, a GLM, those residuals don't necessarily make sense in terms of absolute numbers. So here the, the residual is actually expressed in terms of deviance rather than um, the actual numbers because, you know, res remember the data is just zeros and ones. And so, um, if you calculated absolute residuals, they'd be you know, just the difference between what the, what the load you predicted in either zero or one, which isn't actually very informative. Uh, but here we're kind of expressing this in terms of uh, how close the observation is to uh, the log likelihood. Um, we get coefficients out, ah, excuse me, uh, coefficients out in terms of our estimate of the slope, our standard error, this uh, slope and we get estimate of slope and intercept. We get a standard error for the slope and intercepts, and then given the that uh, parameter value and standard error, we can calculate a z score. And given that z score, we can calculate uh, a p value. And so a lot of that is similar to uh, the standard LM. Uh, another important difference, though, is that uh, the standard LM will express uh, in this last block, uh, a statement about uh, degrees of freedom and uh, root mean squared errors. And here, instead of expressing that RSME error, we're seeing now the, the residual in terms of, of deviance. And so the residual deviance is the deviance uh, from the model itself at the maximum likelihood estimate, uh, given the number of degrees of freedom, which is you know, the sample size minus uh, number of parameters. The null deviance indicates that it also fit uh, a null model here, um, which would be when there's just intercept and no slope. And so that gives us uh, that, and it's, you know, there's one fewer parameter there, so it's uh, that many degrees of freedom. And you could actually, from this information, calculate the AIC because, you know, for example, if this is the deviance of our model, and in this case, we would then need to apply the penalty for complexity, which in this case is four, because we have two parameters, an intercept and slope, times two. You could then do the same thing for the null, which would be, uh, you'd add two to this, you know, because there would just be a, a single intercept, times two, and we'd see that the, um, in this case, the, the linear, the univariate logistic regression is, is doing quite a bit better than the, the null model of no relationship with x. And uh, you can also, uh, you know, in, in addition to calculating uh, the, uh, the means, you can also uh, use predict to put interval estimates um, around uh, GLMs. It's, also not hard to, to bootstrap those interval estimates if you homebrew these things yourself. 
Uh, it's worth noting that that the logit is not the only option for a link function uh, when you use a binomial model. Uh, within um, GLM, there's enough, uh, four other options available to you. In addition to the logit, you could also choose the probit, which is the normal CDF. That was actually the link function that we used uh, back in the maturation model lab. Uh, there's the couchit, which is the cumulative couchy. Couchy, uh, remember, is a distribution similar to the normal, and uh, and Laplace, and that it's defined on uh, plus or from plus or minus infinity, but it's a, a has a much higher variance than either the normal or the uh, yeah uh, sorry it's a, it's a much higher variance than, than the um, normal or the uh, Laplace. Uh, we could alternatively choose a log link function, which uh, has some, some danger because it, you know, it'll choose parameter values that make sense over the, the range of the data you have, but obviously could extrapolate, uh, can't extrapolate to negative values, but could potentially extrapolate to uh, probability is greater than one. And then there's this comp complementary log log, um, which unlike uh, the probit and the couch it, uh, it, it's sigmoidal, but it's not necessarily symmetric. Uh, and often is chosen when you have uh, values that are very high or very low probability. So it's kind of more sensitive in those regions. And then finally, if you're coding up uh, the, the model yourself, you can choose any function at all that relates, uh, that can translate from that plus or minus infinity back to the zero one domain. So here's an example of fitting uh, logistic regressions, uh, sorry, binomial GLMs under the different choices of the logistic uh, link function versus these four other link functions, probit, couchit, log, and complementary log log. Uh, and we can look at how each of them performs. In this case, you can see that uh, the logit and the probit give you very, very similar uh, fits. The couch it, you kind of see this batter tail behavior of that model. The log, you know, makes sense over this domain, but you could see that if you had an X bigger than the ones that we observed, you would start extrapolating to uh, probabilities greater than one. And then there's this complementary log log, which we can see is slightly asymmetric. Uh, moving beyond this, we're going to continue in our next lectures uh, thinking about generalized linear models and expanding, expanding this topic from kind of classic frequentist logistic models to how we implement Bayesian logistic models and then move on to other GLMs such as the Poisson and multinomial model and then move from there into continuing to think about the assumptions of linear models and how we relax them.